Hey guys, welcome back. So we are in week four, the final week of Aloe Yoga's 30 Days of Mindful Movement, and the theme for this week is water. For this class specifically, we're gonna be working with fluidity, hip flexors, soothing, right? So if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, leave us a comment, maybe let us know what you think, what you'd like to see next, and let's get started. All right, so jumping right into that fluidity, we're going to be working with body rolls. And lucky you, you were at home, presumably doing this alone. I have a lovely crew of people watching me. <laughs> so get grounded in your feet. Start to understand where your sort of limits are with balance, maintaining contact with both feet in the mat. Just loosely getting to know your body and what that means, right? So now it's as if the entire pad of our both feet are touching the mat and we're fully engaged. We're having that conversation with the earth. We're pressing into the earth and the earth is pressing back into us. With that as our foundation, we're going to imagine that there's a wall maybe six inches in front of us. And the way it's going to go is it's going to go slower and probably like feel kind of goofy at first and eventually you'll find your wave. So at first, you're going to kind of reach forward and, and imagine that you would touch just the crown of your head to that wall at first and then your nose, and then your lips, and your chest, and chin. And then right about there, you can see that's where that first exercise we did to kind of get the communication with our toes gripping the mat. Right? So you get your, thr your hip thrust in, and then you just start over. Right? And you can make them as small, so like a little smaller as you're getting used to it, or you can really kind of start to include the knees in this body roll. You'll find that your breath is pretty imperative, too. You can slow things down or speed it up. Going with that idea of authentic and organic movements that feel good in your body, because none of us have done the exact same thing for the last 24 hours, let alone our life, right? So maybe for you, it feels good to throw a little side snake into that body wave, right? Maybe your lower right back is a little tweaked and needs some extra love. Whatever it is, close your eyes and go to town. You've got about two minutes of this. <sighs> and you're just going to start rolling and rocking. Maybe you include the hands. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever feels good to you. This is, you could think of it as like a super food version of cat and cow. And we're just hydrating and, and sort of like lubricating that whole spine, getting everything working, even waking up our core, and uh, again, having that conversation with our body. So we're here for about another 30 seconds. <sighs> Integrate your breath into those body rolls and feel the movement. Understand that even though all of the poses look different on my body and your body and her body and his body, but the sensation can be almost exactly the same, right? We could be experiencing the same struggle or the same bliss, and it might not look at all similar on the outside. <sighs> all right, so from your body rolls, you can kind of just take that crown down to the head, or <laughs> to the floor, rather. Take a big bend in the knees and let your chest rest on the thighs. Maybe you interlace for opposite elbows, taking a nice gentle rag doll. You can encourage stillness or movement, whatever is good for you. Maybe even straighten out the thighs and let the torso dangle. Gently uncurling, coming into a seated position. Just for a moment, you're going to take your feet about as wide as your mat is, and you're coming back right up into your malasana. Instead of sinking down into your malasa, by the way, get it nice and wide. Press your elbows into your knees and then lift up out of it while tucking the pelvis simultaneously. And we're here for another three breaths. So even though we're fully engaged, can you release the tension that's building up? Can you become a little bit more supple? 
All right. And when you've finished with about five breaths of that malasana, just slowly come out of it. Bring your feet nice and wide and your no uh, knees, rather, to touch. And just sit here for a moment. Kind of a counter to the last pose. And for the next pose, we're going to need a block. So feel free to grab your prop. And we're going to take this into a supported bridge, nice and mellow. In fact, if it works for your body's anatomy, I'd say the shortest side. And you're going to place that right at the small of your back, kind of right before the booty starts. Make sure it's centered. And then from here, tuck your left shoulder and then your right shoulder to create a bit of a shelf for your heart. And then untuck your neck, finding length. Maybe the chin tucks in just a hair. Completely relaxing the glutes, the face. Untuck your shoulders one at a time. Engage your feet into the mat, lifting off the block, and move it out of the way. So from here, you're going to melt back down into the mat. And we're going to take half hero's pose. See if you can get into it like this. You're coming back into that bridge, higher than you normally would for a bridge. Ground down into the leg that you're not going to be taking into your hero. So my left leg, and I'm going to just slip my right leg under me and wiggle it around until it's in the right spot. So instead of dropping next to the thigh like we might, you know, might have traditionally seen, come up onto that and stack the foot right underneath your glute. All right, from here, pressing your hands into the mat, the left foot pushes into the mat. Imagine or visualize that you could create length from your hip bone to your knee, even though that's a pretty <laughs> set length, right? but visualize and start to push into the top of the foot that's on the mat and visualize length. You start to feel an incredible stretch along the front body here. So I'm actively, again, actively pressing into the top of my foot and drawing my knee away from my body. And release, untuck. Maybe you just shake it out a little. Let's go for the other side. Again, lifting up into a nice high bridge. And then tuck one leg. Tuck it right under the glute. Your other foot's like 90 degree angle, whatever feels balanced. And then once you're here, start to press into the top of that foot, finding length and extension through your front body. It's interesting, on the right side, I feel it almost all in my psoas, and then here on this side, I feel it down in my low quad where my knee connects. I love these little slower poses that allow you to check in with your body and have that conversation. What needs more love? What needs a different kind of love? <sighs> and untuck. From here, just take a nice, relaxed sweep to bada. The soles of the feet come together and the knees drop open. I invite you to take one hand to your belly and one hand to your heart. Feel your heart beat. Feel your belly rise and fall with the breath. It's your life force. Mm. Bring your knees together. Grab for the backs of the knees and slowly just a little spinal rock here. Nice and gentle until you're seated. So we're going to need a block for this pose as well. And this one takes a bit of trial and error until you find out right where that prop needs to be for you, but it's pretty incredible. So I'm going to put my block probably, what is this, is like three quarters of the way down my mat. The idea is where is my knee going to land if I'm in a crescent lunge, right? So instead of getting into my crescent like I normally would, I'm going to start with my knee on the block and then bring my foot forward into that crescent. 
Again, a little bit of trial and error until you find it, but I swear it feels so good. So then, once you find it and we're here, you're gonna keep your back toes tucked, 90 degree in the front leg, and kind of same idea as we did, I think that might have been week two, where we were visualizing that left hip driving forward while our right foot draws in towards us. All right, now release all of that and just melt into this, melt, melt, melt. Maybe you even find some kind of like weird alignment, and as long as it doesn't hurt, it's fine. So you're here for just a moment. Okay, so here's where the fun comes in. So you're gonna get back into there. Now, the only thing you're gonna do is engage your left leg, lifting your knee off of the block. And for me, it essentially isolates my left front body, allowing me to prep for those back bends or maybe just correct all the sitting I do, whether it be Netflix or productivity. <laughs> And we're just going to maybe do like three of those. So you lift, and you're engaging your glutes, keeping your hips nice and squared, pressing the mat away with that front foot, and then just relaxing the knee back down. Rest for a moment, and back up. Okay, that seems good. Ooh. A little baby puppy to counter that. Mm. And then I'm just going to shift my block over to the other side of my mat and get the other leg. All right, so first we find a nice active space. We visualize that right hip scooping under and coming forward. That left foot, if I wasn't on a sticky, sticky aloe mat, it would just draw right back into me. I'm pulling so hard. And then I'm just going to relax. And again, finding whatever funky variation that doesn't hurt and feels good. Okay. And then back into it. And the idea, again, is that we're just engaging our glute and then straightening through that back leg. And back down. And lift up. Ooh. And back down. <laughs> One more. Three, two. your block out of the way, maybe a little bit of compression if that feels good for you. Mm. And meet me in a down dog. Press the mat away. Find length in the spine first. Inhale your right leg up high. Open at the hips, stacking the hips. Then bend at that right leg. And we're just here. Coming back down, take a little three-legged down dog variation on the other side. <sighs> From your down dog, we're just going to take a few more of those reclined hero pose. And you have an option to include your block or to not. And in fact, both legs is encouraged. If you really liked the one leg variation, then go for it. I'm gonna go back though with both legs tucked. And then the same idea, right? So I'm gonna push into both of the tops of my feet and then I find an active stretch in my front quads. I find it in my hip flexor, my whole lower front body. And I'm lifting, I'm actively engaged, lifting my glutes away from the mat. And then this is what it looks like when I release. And we'll do two more rounds of that. <sighs> Don't 
Don't forget to check in with yourself and remind yourself that this is good. This is okay. We go to the third round. Sometimes with things like hips and heart opening and inversions, so much of it is mental. So checking in and reminding your body, hey, no need to be in a fight or flight state. <sighs> Relax down to the mat. We are a-okay, and I am intending to find this stretch. And see if your body gives a little bit more, opens up for you. And here, shoot it back. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Drop your thighs here. And we talk about, uh, I don't remember, one of the weeks we talked about using the, for the biceps to create the opening in our up dog. So we're going to hang out here for just a moment. Your thighs are in contact with the mat. Your feet, though, are pressing firmly into the mat. So your quads are still engaged. And then there's a lift, right? So I'm not sinking, but I'm lifting out. And back down. Take your knees as wide as your mat and come into your child's pose one last time. into your down dog. Inhale, lift your right leg high. Exhale, swing it through for a pigeon. Option to make this pigeon nice and mellow. You can do that by drawing your heel in towards your, well, in towards you. <laughs> and then take a look at that back leg. It's nice and long and active. So then from here, if your block is conveniently close or maybe you want to hop up and get it, Give yourself some support right at the chest. And then let the head bow down towards the earth. ready, rolling out onto that outer hip, move the block out of the way, and then take a few tick-tocks. So that left knee comes out, right knee drops in, and then reverse it. From there, your feet come a little closer together, both of the feet are placed into the mat, your left hand places back behind you, and maybe a wild thing is within your practice. Come back down with control. Back into your half pigeon position. Tuck the back toes. Inhale, lift it high. Option to stack or come right back into a still down dog for three breaths. Check in with your body and how different does it feel when we're in between sets, when the right side's gotten the love, but the left side hasn't? So let's do that left side. And I think it's interesting just to take note of how quickly you can change your thoughts, your physical state. So with what, 20 seconds here in Pigeon, we can physically feel and sometimes even see a difference in our body. So the next time you don't want to go to yoga, think about that. 20 seconds, what a difference it makes. yourself up and away from the mat, moving the block out of the way. 
Same thing as we did on the other side, just a few TikToks here. <laughs> And then your feet are going to come a little closer together. Your right hand's going to reach back behind you. And again, maybe a wild thing is within your practice. And back down. And do our pigeon. And then tucking the back toes and bringing it back into the last down dog of class. Coming onto your knees, untuck your toes, and swing your legs out in front of you. An option to take your block and place it right about where your low back is going to be again. From there, coming into your soup tabata. And we're just going to be here for a few breaths. We won't hold this very long. Make sure you have no pain, no pitching, pinching rather. Just a new sensation maybe. your hands to the outsides of your knees, bring your knees together, lift up off the block and move it out of the way. And option to return back to Supta Bada, an asana for your Shavasana or to straighten out into your traditional corpse pose and take your rest. some point during your shavasana, the feet touching becomes too intense. I can feel it pretty intense in my left hip. Or just straighten your legs out. Maybe take one nice long body stretch. And relax. Shavasana, of course, is yours to sit as long as you'd like. Maybe after this video stops, you close your laptop or put your phone away or whatever it may be and have your own whole other Shavasana, which I fully encourage. Thank you guys for joining along. It's been so much fun. Um, if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel, leave a few comments, and let us know either what you liked or didn't like or what you'd like to see next time. I love you guys. Namaste.